Hi, John Valvano here, and in the last video we saw, we saw the starter code for Lab 10 for C++. Now in this video I'm going to show you sort of how to get started to encapsulate the information about a sprite uh, rather than an instruct. We're going to put it in a class. Okay, um, now uh, we are going to have, okay. Uh, we are going to have an enumerated type. In this case, I've got dead and alive, but you could have other things like dying or exploding or happy or sad or hungry. Uh, again, you can have multiple uh, statuses for your sprite. In this one, we just got alive and dead. So in the other video, we used a struct. In this one, we're going to do the same sort of thing, but we're going to encapsulate it in a class. All right? And uh, you can call it whatever you want. I call it sprite. And then I'm going to begin by thinking about the, um, about the private information. Now I could have private variables and I could have private methods. Uh, and so the things I had in the other sprite were its exposition. Notice I'm going to use a sign number uh, so that if it goes off the uh, deep end, it'll, it'll know, um, uh, I know which side of the screen I've gone off of. So that's the exposition in pixels. Right, it's supposed to be 0, 127. There's the Y position. Again, top is 0 and the bottom is 159. Uh, I'm going to have acceleration. I mean, I'm going to have v uh, velocity, which is going to be in pixels uh, per frame or pixels per 30 hertz. Uh, and so if my, if my um, image uh, has a black ring around it, uh, a background ring around it, I can set the velocity to plus one, minus one, uh, zero, and then that way it will cover its track. Okay, so this is the simple uh, demand drawn system where I move it very slowly uh, and, and draw the sprite with a black border. Okay, uh, I do have an image. Again, this is my image of what it looks like in regular space. Okay, uh, now the sprites may look different. Um, and then in order to do that, uh, um, in order for this sprite to disappear from the screen, I am going to need a corresponding image, a black image, which has the same shape, okay? Uh, so if my small uh, enemy is uh, 16 by 10, I will make a black image of the same type so that I can erase my sprite. All right, getting back over here. All right, and that'll be this one here. So when the sprite dies, I can erase it. Okay, uh, just like the other video, uh, the, every sprite has a life, in this case, live or dead. Um, and because the sprites may be of different size, we'll encode that, the width and height, into the uh, private structure as well. Okay, um, and now in this context, every sprite is going to essentially have its own semaphore, uh, which will decide whether or not I need to redraw it. And so if you have lots of semaphores, uh, lots of sprites, you may not want to draw them all. You only want to draw the ones that move. All right. So that's a true if I need to redraw it. Okay. So now let's talk about our public uh, events. Um, and those are going to be functions that one calls to uh, use and con con uh, to control the sprite. And so obviously we need a constructor. Uh, this is a simple constructor. Uh, sprites are built dead. And then we're going to use a second, second function, uh, which initializes the sprite uh, for its position, x and y, its velocity, uh, in x and y, its size. And again, it's two, two images, what it looks like in regular space and what it looks like when it's dead. Okay. So uh, yeah, when I, when this gets invoked, I'll take the uh, I'll, I'll initialize the x and y position, the velocity x, velocity y. You can add acceleration if you want. You know, I didn't, but you could. Okay. Uh, there are my two images. Uh, image is the regular image. Black is what it looks like when it's dead. Uh, and then I'll initialize its uh, width in pixels and height in pixels. Uh, and leave and, and then again I passed in the whether or not this is born live or dead. Okay, so I'll set its live position. All right, so now I need a couple of functions. This one's going to move it. I'm going to use kinematics, right? And so it's going to uh, it's going to look at the sprite, decide if it's alive, 
And if it's alive, uh, I'm going to move it, okay? And if it's alive and I moved it, I'm going to need to redraw it, okay? Uh, this particular function, for reasons that, that uh, I decided, you can do whatever you want, it's going to return a Boolean whether or not it was alive or dead. Okay, so this will actually return a one if the device is, if the sprite is alive. I moved it, it is now alive, or I moved it and now it's dead. Okay, all right. Um, and so now I have some, some uh, special cases. Uh, y greater than 140 means it went off the top of the screen and is now dead. Uh, y less than 10 means it all went off the bottom of the screen is now dead. Okay. Going up the bottom of the screen is now dead. Um, X less than zero, negative X means it went off to the left and is now dead. Uh, X greater than 102 means it went off to the right and is now dead. Um, again, you can make your game work however you want. This is pretty simple. Uh, the interesting one is uh, in the middle somewhere, and there's my kinematics. Uh, that's essentially a discrete integration where the x position is updated with some uh, some constant times the velocity. In this case, the constant is one. Okay, so I, I change x and y according to the velocity. Now, if the velocity equals zero, uh, that bad boy didn't move. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I'm, I've moved it. Okay. Uh, okay. So the next function I need is to draw it. Okay. Again, the move is going to run out of out of the background. You notice move did not do any LCD output. Okay. Draw is going to run out of the foreground, and it does the drawing, okay? And so if I need to draw, uh, again, that's a semaphore. The background sets it. The foreground tests it. If it needs to draw, it will draw, okay? And then set the semaphore back to zero. Uh, if it's alive, okay, if, if, Bill is al if the sprite is alive, then I'll draw his image uh, at the position where it's supposed to be uh, with the size it's supposed to be. Uh, if Bill is, if the semaphore is dead, uh, I'm going to draw it a black square. That way it will disappear from the screen. And then in either case, I'll set the semaphore back to zero. So it only redraws it once. Okay. All right. The next function, uh, you can add all sorts of other functions. Okay. So that's why it's a lab and, and not just a, you know, a plug and play. Okay. So I'm going to have 18 sprites. Uh, again, this is going to invoke um statically 18 classes uh because the because the heap is so small and the stack is so small we strongly encourage you to not use dynamic um creation of sprites uh because uh, you'll run out of heap real fast okay so this is going to go into regular global memory and then when i want to make it alive i'll initialize it and when i want it to be dead i will make it die okay so again, these stacks are, these sprites are not in the stack. They're not on the heap. They're in global uh, memory space. Uh, now I'm going to need uh, some helper functions. This one will do that initialization. And so what I'm going to do, this is now not part of the class anymore. Uh, this is a, um, it's just a regular helper function, uh, which will, uh, that's my semaphore for my foreground. This is my foreground background semaphore. Uh, for my game engine, uh, and then I will one by one create my enemies, okay? Enemy number zero is here on the upper left, uh, not moving. So there's the velocity. That enemy is going to stay put. Uh, and there's another enemy. Uh, this one's going to move, okay? So the X position is, the X velocity is minus one, so it's going to move to the left. And the Y velocity is one. It'll move down and down to the left, okay? Uh, there's enemy number two. Uh, she'll sit there not doing anything. Uh, enemy number three is just going to go down. Okay. Uh, we'll move down. Uh, enemy number four is going to move uh, down into the right. It's got a plus X velocity and a plus Y velocity. And they got one more not doing anything. Okay. And now I'm going to need another helper function, which will go through all my sprites and move them if I need to. And so I'll look at all my sprites. And if they, um, if I move it and it's alive, uh, then I will set a flag. And now I know at least one sprite is alive. Uh, and then if there's at least one sprite alive, the global system will remain alive. This is my game over uh, stage. And so... Um, 
Okay, so go back and go off. All right, and so my uh, that was my game move. Uh, now I have a game draw, does the same sort of thing. I'm going to go through my sprites and draw them. Again, they all have their own semaphore in them, so it's not that complicated. So every sprite I have gets drawn. Uh, again, if it's alive and needs to be drawn, it, this this uh, draw function will, will punch it up on the screen. Okay. All right, so I have a background task. Okay, this is my game engine. This is going to be running at 30 hertz. And I'll move it now, and I'll set the semaphore. This is what we've been doing all, all chapters. Okay, so 30 times a second, I'll do my game engine. In this case, I just move my sprites and set the semaphore. Now, when you get more complicated, you can put things like buttons. And if you put your button, it does something. And it plays a sound, or you can input your slide pod, and you can make that do stuff. Okay, so here in the game engine, uh, you're going to sample your inputs. Now, play sound, as we saw in the other video, doesn't actually play the sound. It just begins to play the sound. Uh, and uh, and then if you can look for collisions, your game, your score, whatever, that has to hurt. That occurs here. Um, and remember that you only have, you, you be careful, you're going to run out of bus cycles. No backward jumps, no, no unconditional loops. Be very careful in here that you don't uh, use up all your bus cycles. Uh, so this is a wonderful thing for you to for you to profile to see how long game task runs. So set a set a flag at the beginning. Read Sysdict, whatever you got to do. So, um, uh, set it set the uh, clear the GPIO at the end, or or read Sysdict again. Measure how long game task runs because most kids say my game don't work, and I say, well, is your interrupt occurring at 30 hertz? And that's 333 milliseconds. And if you're using more than 33 milliseconds to run this game task, it can't work. All right, let's go on. Uh, fun part about Lab 10 is you get to talk in other languages. Uh, here's some Portuguese phrases. Uh, again, this is uh, hola in uh, Portuguese and, and goodbye in Portuguese and Portuguese in Portuguese. Um, and I'm going to print them on the screen. Okay, so the basic idea of the main program is to disable interrupts, do all my initializations, and then enable interrupts after everything's initialized. That way you won't get any hard faults if you try to run code without being initialized. Okay, so I could say we're gonna run with the PLL on. Uh, if you use a random number generator, you can seed it. Um, and then there's my initialization for the liquid crystal display. Uh, I'm going to initialize my game, so all my sprites are now, at least six of my sprites are, are now active, or five of my sprites, however I may have made, uh, are now active. Uh, I'll say hello in Portuguese, well that says Portuguese in Portuguese, and then I'll say hello in Portuguese, uh, wait a little while, and then play the game. Notice I have, a, um, I have some static images on the screen, okay? Uh, now be very careful, there should only be one fill screen. Well, maybe when you change levels, you can refill screen. But you'll notice I don't erase the screen. If you erase the screen during gameplay, it'll flicker, okay? And here's some, I punched up some uh, static images to just to make it look pretty. And like I said, I have, uh, I have a background task here. I'm using periodic timer one, running at 30 hertz. Okay, so that's 80 million divided by 30. That's my uh, 30 hertz game engine. Okay. All right, there's my foreground loop. And I'm basically going to run until everybody's dead. Okay. Um, and any any sprite that's still living uh, will will be displayed. And when, my, when this level is over, I'm going to uh, come out of it. Okay, so there's my semaphore, uh, just like I did in all the other videos. Uh, the background set the semaphore. The foreground will test it, and when it's true, it'll clear it again and do my game engine. So there's the graphics. Okay, make sure all your LCD outputs occur in the main loop of the main program. All right. So when the game's over, I'll say goodbye again. Uh, you get to have fun of talking in multiple languages. This one only talks in Portuguese. Okay. And then again, you can output numbers, you can output characters uh, to say what happens, and then 
this particular thing does nothing. All right, let's let's uh, let's build it and run it. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, again, I'm going to run it on the simulator. It runs way faster on the real board. Um, now, here, you're going to have to embed all your stuff. Okay, so I'll put this guy over here, and we'll go. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, so um, the simulator runs pretty slow. And uh, there it says, hola in Portuguese. It'll wait a little while to race the screen. And there's my guys. Hey, hey, there's a guy going. This one here, he's going off to that way. Uh, this one's coming straight down, and this one goes here. So when this guy hits the side of the wall, uh, boom, he's gone. <laughs> and when this guy hits the side of the wall, he's gone. And this one's going to uh, get all the way down to the bottom, which we're not going to wait for because the simulator is way too slow. So in summary, uh, you're going to use the class, at least one class, new class in this lab. Uh, the most obvious one is the sprite, and you can use it to encapsulate the behavior of your sprites. Um, so can they can move, they can dance, they can sing. Well, you get all the choices uh, that you want it to be. All right, so enjoy this lab.